Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, Ultramarine Linux based on Fedora Workstation has established itself as a user-friendly and powerful Linux distribution. In this review we take a look at the latest version Ultramarine Linux 39 codenamed Kuma in the flagship edition with Budgie desktop. We look at the new functions, improvements and features and try to determine whether it's worth to switch for Fedora users or for you with another distro at the start. And now let's go! On the Ultramarine Linux page the distro describes itself as follows. Ultramarine Linux is a Linux-based operating system designed for your personal workstation or battle station. It is designed to be as easy to use as possible and to stay out of your way. Ultramarine Linux keeps up with the latest and greatest software in the open source community while trying to be stable and secure. Ultramarine is suitable for everyone, from beginner to tech enthusiast and even for Windows dropouts. That sounds promising, doesn't it? Firstly, we should note that Ultramarine is based on Fedora Workstation and always releases its subsequent versions slightly after Fedora. Ultramarine Linux has Budgie Desktop as its flagship edition. There are also editions with KDE Plasma, Gnome Shell and Pantheon Desktop. The core team consists of six people, as can be seen from the Ultramarine wiki page. The team is spread around the world. Like Fedora, Ultramarine Linux follows a semi round model, which follows a classic point release model, but always provide very up-to-date and new packages and software within a version. The Fedora base was therefore positioned between the classic LTS distros such as Debian or Ubuntu and rolling distros such as Arch or Solos. The Fedora editions are most comparable with Ubuntu interim versions as both are released every six months. With regard to the minimum requirements, you can use the following as a guide. 64-bit or RM processor, 4 GB RAM, preferably 8 or more, 10 GB disk space, preferably 20 GB or more. More is always better. The 4 GB is the absolute lower limit. Since Ultramarine runs Budgie, KDE, GNOME and Pantheon, I would recommend at least 8GB if the user experience is to be reasonably usable, better 16GB. Ultramarine 39 was released on Thanksgiving 2023, especially on November 24. The target group are desktop users. Ultramarine simply wants to run and not get in the way of your work. At the same time, it should always offer up-to-date software, a balancing act that is not always easy to achieve. What's new? In the flagship edition, Nautilus was replaced by Nemo. The Pentium desktop uses elementary OS Flatpak apps, support for Chromebooks and Raspberry Pi 4, new background images, and of course, all the new features that came with Fedora 39. If in doubt, take a look at the changelog. Link is in the description below. If you are ready to go with Ultramarine Linux, then go to ultramarine-linux.org and click here on download. Now you have to decide which edition. I looked at Budgie, Gnome and Pantheon, but decided to use the flagship Budgie edition for this video. Click on download to download the ISO file. Below the download button, you will find the respective checksum for the corresponding ISO. For example, here. If you don't know what to do with it, have a look at the description. I have already demonstrated how to create these checksums and thus protect yourself from corrupted or manipulated software packages. It only takes a few minutes. However, the developers themselves also describe how the test works in the installation guide. Go back to the main page and then on installation guide. Here you also can find the system requirements just for your information and then scroll down And here you see verifying the safety of an ultramarine ISO. Which way you prefer is up to you to decide. After the ISO is fully downloaded and checked, 
Then continue with the preparation of the installation medium. You can either install in a VM or on metal. If you install on a real computer, you will need a tool such as a Spalina Etcher and a USB stick to flash the ISO. If you boot the VM or from USB, you will first enter the live mode ad. The installer is placed on the desktop and is similar to that of Fedora. For this reason, I'll keep it short at this point and refer to my Fedora installation with you. There, I described the installation including minor optimizations to exploit the full potential of Butterfs file system plus the subvolumes. Link is in the description below. Let's come to the system measurement. My system took 6 GB from the hard disk. The memory requirement was 1.8 GB in the idle mode after startup. The number of pre-installed apps was 1755. Flatpak apps are not pre-installed. Budgie 10.802 was deployed at the time of creating this video. Budgie is a GNOME fork and this is noticeable when using it. In general, the desktop has a Windows-like design concept, a bar like the taskbar at the bottom. On the left is the start menu, which looks different to Windows. Next to the start menu is the switch of the workspaces, for example, virtual desktops. No quick launches, apps are pinned and apps are generally displayed in the center of the bar. Here you find Firefox. If I open the file browser, then you see it is next here. System indicators and controls such as network, volumes and clock are on the right hand side of the bar. There is a button on the far right. Pressing it brings up a sidebar which some of you may remember from Windows Vista when it was realized with gadgets. Here you have also quick access to notifications but there is currently no notification on my system present. By default the desktop comes with a black or dark theme. This can be changed in the budgie desktop settings here under style. First switch off this slider at dark theme. Then you have the possibility to choose a different theme such as Fluent Round. And then you see it's switching to a light mode. If you want green, it's green here, the accent color. I will go back to Fluent Dark. Now let's check the pre-installed software. We have Linux kernel 6.6. .6. As browser, there's Firefox. As makeline, there's non-pre-installed. As office package, there's LibreOffice. And as software container, there's Flatpak on board. In general, the system is quite clean and more or less follows the model of the Fedora base. More or less than more. That's fine if you don't expect a flagship to include everything imaginable. I mention this precisely because it is considered a suitable choice for Windows switchers. I doubt whether all Windows users know the corresponding program alternative for Linux, which is why a little more included software such as Thunderbird as a mail client for instance might be helpful here. Ultramarine offers some interesting desktop improvements compared to Fedora Workstation. If you are currently using Fedora and are interested in Ultramarine, the developers offer a migration script which you can use to convert a Fedora workstation system into an Ultramarine system. But this at your own risk. Here it is at the main page at the bottom. Just copy the script, execute it in the terminal and then follow the instructions. But like I said, at your own risk. The developers of Ultramarine integrate their own package sources into the system. You can find them in the software center, here under software repositories. Then scroll down. Then here Terra Packages 39 and Ultramarine Linux 39. This is not necessarily mean that this is a bad thing. But it does mean that the developers are responsible for maintaining it properly. Whether a team of six persons will have the necessary cloud in the long term remains to be seen. It is feasible, but it could also be a sign that you have nice ideas and do something quickly without considering the long term consequences. Doesn't necessarily apply here, we will see. I have noticed incomplete translations in the German language package for the Bachi, Gnome and Pantheon edition. This is not a serious problem, but is a little unpleasant because other distros have not been noticed negatively at this point. 
So you'll either have to live with it or look for a solution by yourself. According to DistroWatch, the first edition was published in December 2021. This means that the distro is still young. Whether this is an advantage or disadvantage is subjective. I'm always cautiously optimistic about such things. Some of you might remember the Antergos effect. A few years ago, this was one of the promising arch fork distros that wanted to be user-friendly and thus became very successful. However, the team and lead developer got it over their heads and pulled the plug and cancelled the distro. The users then were forced to look for an alternative themselves and switch. My intention here is to point out the danger that could arise with young distros on the one hand and a small development team on the other hand. Whether this does not necessarily apply to Ultramarine. Now let's come to my conclusion. You can tell that this is not Fedora with a different desktop. But that's where I often ask myself why Ultramarine and not Fedora. Yes, Bachi has been polished up and I'm sure some people will like it. I could never make friends with Bachi. So Bachi has to win over someone like me. If you like Bachi, you'll probably soon be convinced anyway. It just didn't quite grab me. I like the GNOME version with the tiling options. This comes as standard with the same tiling function as we know from PubOS. I like that. However, this does not hide the fact that the distro offers little of its own out of the box. It looks nice visually, but is weak when it comes to incorrect translations and precise targeting. The Fedora base does not make any mistakes here. But it has to be said that the focus on a Linux desktop comes out better with Ultramarine than with Fedora, for example, which delivers GNOME without any customizations. At first, I was even inclined to compare the Pantheon version with Elementary OS, which basically works. But unfortunately, the faulty translations is a bit of a problem here. Otherwise, if this is solved, it could be interesting. So I leave it up to you to decide on the added value of the distro. Do you like it? Or would you prefer Fedora, Nobara or any other distro? Let me know in the comments. I'm curious about your judgment. If you like this video and want to stay tuned for more, then please subscribe to the channel. Thanks for the kind attention, ladies and gentlemen. See you soon. Peace.